Chipotle is really out here charging people like $20 for a bowl of rice, veggies, and meat. True story, recently I got a double meat, carne asada, guacamole, cauliflower rice bowl there. Came out to like $22 and I still made dinner when I got home after. True story. Mexican style food is super cheap to make and it's super flavorful. What better time to step up your Taco Tuesday game than right before Cinco de Mayo? Today I'm going to show you how to make my five favorite Mexican style side dishes that are all five ingredients or less, as well as homemade carnitas. 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 Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. Thanks to those of you that already subscribed to the channel, but if you're new here and you're into either home cooking or fishing, be sure you hit that subscribe button. We're almost at a thousand. All the ingredients that you're gonna see in this video cost me about $37. And wait till you see how much food that we're gonna make. So let's get started. So we're gonna get our carnitas in the oven first. I'm using pork butt for this, your traditional braising pork. I'm gonna season it generously with salt and pepper and sear it off in a Dutch oven in some olive oil. Just take your time, get some nice color on it, rotate it all around until you lose patience with it. And once you're happy with the color that it has, throw in any aromatics from your fridge. I'm just throwing in onions, garlic, some parsley that I had left over. You can beef this up with a lot of different vegetables, but I'm trying to make it simple for the home cook. Then we're going to dump in some chicken broth. You want to cover the pork butt about halfway. You don't want it to be submerged. I don't have enough chicken broth, so I'm putting some water and some chicken bouillon in the pot as well. And then I'm just gonna season the broth a little bit with some smoked paprika, some garlic powder, and some cumin. Then I'm gonna put that in my oven with the lid on at 300 degrees for two and a half to three hours or until it is falling apart tender. We're gonna use roasted garlic in a few areas for this recipe. To roast garlic, I like to just cut the top of the garlic bulb off like this. And anytime I roast garlic, I like to do four or five bulbs just because you can eat it on a lot of different stuff. So once I have all the tops of the garlic cut correctly, I'm going to put it in some aluminum foil with some olive oil and some cracked black pepper. And I'm gonna roast that off in my oven at 400 degrees for about an hour or until it is golden brown and soft. Keep an eye on it. It should look like this and smell amazing. Now let's prep our salsa verde. So we're gonna start with a poblano pepper. You can use any other chili pepper that you want. I think this one has the best flavor. And I'm gonna use a blowtorch to just char the outside of it. You can also do this in your broiler. You can do it on your grill. You can do it on a gas stove. Just take your time and make sure the whole outside of the pepper is nice and charred and softened a little bit. Once it is, you're gonna remove it and put it into a bowl and cover it with some plastic wrap so it can kind of steam and soften up a little bit further. We're gonna use five tomatillos for this salsa. They're these little tomato looking things with a husk around them. I like to just cut them in half and then it makes the husks easy to remove. So we're gonna cut all them in half and remove all the husks. And then we're gonna put them cut side down into a cast iron pan, season them with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and get them roasted off in our oven for about 20 minutes at 350 degrees or until they are light green and softened. By this time, our poblano pepper should be nice and soft, so we're gonna cut it in half and remove the ribs and all the seeds. And then we're gonna take a spoon and just rub the outside of the pepper to remove all of the peel. So it'll be a nice roasted, charred flavored, but it won't have any of the pepper peel to go in the salsa. We are then going to put those ingredients into a food processor or a blender with an entire bulb of our roasted garlic, and you can just squeeze it out like this into any dish that you choose. Just be careful if it's hot like mine here, you'll wanna get this molten garlic lava on your hand. We will add probably about a quarter of a cup of cilantro and blend it. As it's blending, we're going to stream in about two tablespoons of honey. This is kind of the kicker ingredient in our salsa verde, and then adjust the seasonings with salt and pepper. You can also add some apple cider vinegar to this salsa if you want. Now let's make our pico de gallo. We're gonna start by dicing a red onion. Whenever you dice a red onion, I prefer to do it the traditional way, where you cut it lengthwise almost entirely through the red onion, and then you cut it vertically in strips. And then once all those strips are cut and the onion is still together, we're going to rotate the onion and cut it perpendicular to those strips we just made. It's important when you make pico de gallo that everything is diced very finely in my opinion. You want this stuff to fit on a chip or be bite-sized. You don't want large chunks. So take your time when you're dicing these things. 
We'll put our red onions into a bowl, and I like to add the lime juice to the onions, kind of like a ceviche, and it will soften them up ahead of time for everything. Anytime I make salsa, I always put the acid in with my alliums first. I had some leftover beefsteak tomatoes from BLT night. We're going to use those for the pico de gallo. You can use romos, whatever. But again, just take your time and make sure you dice them fine, because we want them to fit onto bite-sized things. Then we're going to use half of a jalapeno pepper for this. So I'm going to split the jalapeno pepper in half, remove the seeds and ribs. And again, I'm going to dice this super, super fine because you don't want any of your guests to bite into a jalapeno pepper chunk and burn their mouths. So these should be diced even smaller than the tomatoes and the red onion. And if you want to use the whole jalapeno pepper, absolutely live it up. But I'm only using half because I don't want it to be super, super spicy. Then we'll give that a nice mix. Then we will consult the hero of Mexican cuisine, cilantro, and again another quarter of a cup, and we'll just rough chop that. You don't want to pulverize this too, too finely in my opinion, you just kind of want to run your knife through it one or two times. And combine that with our other ingredients, and season it with salt and pepper, you cannot forget this step. Pico de gallo needs salt in my opinion, and we'll fold it together. And that's it, super cheap and easy fresh pico de gallo, very underrated for ingredient salsa in my opinion. Now let's make some guacamole. So we're going to start out with the other half of that diced red onion and we're going to juice another lime into that ceviche style like we did before and mix that around so it can get acquainted with one another. And once we're ready, we're going to use two avocados for this. Just split them in half. Be careful removing the seed from the avocado. I like to just do it with the heel of my knife and turn it like that. It's very safe. Then I'll take a spoon and scoop the avocados out and put them in my bowl with my red onions. Once I have both of my avocados in the bowl with my onions and lime, my girlfriend actually discovered the best tool for mashing avocados, and it is surprisingly a pastry blender. Yes, trust me, you can use a pastry blender and the avocado will be mashed up in a matter of like 20 seconds. It's unbelievable. Works super well. Try it. Trust me. Then once the avocados are mashed up, we're going to fold all those ingredients together into a nice gloopy guacamole ball and you guessed it, another quarter cup of cilantro, rough chopped. We will fold that into our avocado onion lime mixture and make sure you season this with salt and pepper just like the other salsas. And that's it. I don't like to add tomatoes or garlic or anything fancy to my guacamole. I think it only needs these four ingredients to be delicious, but that is up to your interpretation. Add whatever you like. Our last item is going to be corn ribs. So. Start out with some fresh corn if you can get it, husk the corn, and we're going to cut this into quarters after removing all the little silk threads. Be super careful cutting this corn. I've seen some people online have cut themselves pretty badly doing this. I prefer to just use my vegetable cleaver, does a good job, and I've never hurt myself. So just cut it into quarters, and then we're going to put those quarters into a cast iron pan as we mix some butter, olive oil, salt, pepper, smoked paprika, chili powder, and any other Mexican seasonings that you like. And I'm gonna squeeze in some roasted garlic because I have it here and it's smelling out my kitchen pretty nicely. And then I'm just gonna baste all my corn in that oily, awesome concoction. And I'm gonna put that in my oven at 400 degrees for 15 minutes and then broil it for the last two. For our corn condiment, we're going to take some mayonnaise and the juice of some chipotle peppers in adobo. Be careful here, this stuff is a little spicy. Taste it as you go. And once you have your chipotle mayo made, put it into a squeeze bottle. I like to broil my corn ribs the last minute just so they get a nice little brown coating on the outside. And then it's time to plate them up. So we'll put the corn ribs down followed by a nice drizzle of our chipotle mayo. Some fresh cilantro. Some cojita cheese, which is basically just Mexican parmesan. And that's it. Ridiculously simple dish, but everybody that I've served this to loves it. Now let's make some queso. I'm going to be using some mild cheddar and pepper jack for this. You can use Monterey Jack. Just stick with hard cheeses. And I use eight ounces of two different cheeses each time I make queso. So I'm gonna grate these cheeses up and put them into a bowl. Then I'm gonna get some butter and olive oil into a pot and start sweating down one white onion and the other half of that jalapeno pepper that we diced up. I'm going to be making a very light roux for this queso because I only have a pound of cheese. If you have more cheese than that, just thicken it with cheese at the end instead of making roux. Then I'm going to add about one cup of milk to the queso, give it a whisk until everything is up to temperature and the roux is incorporated. You don't want to boil this too hard by the way. Once it's hot, I'm going to whisk in my cheese bit by bit. We're creating an emulsion here, so you want to make sure that you whisk the entire time. One, to emulsify all the ingredients and two, that none of your cheese burns on the bottom. So do that bit by bit 
I'm also going to add two to three slices of American cheese, season that with salt and pepper, and I like to finish it with a dollop of sour cream at the end. This is also going to thin it out, so if your queso is too thick, you can always thin it out with sour cream at the end, and it should look like this. No chunks, not too thick, not too thin. It will thicken up as it cools though. Once it's done, we'll put it into a nice fancy bowl like this and garnish it with whatever you would like. I have some leftover tomatoes and some cilantro. You can use the pico de gallo if you want. You can use olives, whatever, bacon. By this point, our pork is done. It is tender. We're going to take it out of the oven and I'm going to reserve a few ladles of that sauce for our carnitas broth mixture, if you will. So we'll take our pork out, take the bone out. It should fall out nice and easily like this if the pork is tender enough. And we will chop the pork up on a cutting board to our desired taco consistency. I don't remove any of the fat or anything. I just chop it all up. And then we're going to put that into whatever bowl that you're going to serve it in. To our broth, I'm going to add two of those chipotle peppers in adobo, probably half a cup of cilantro, the juice of one lime, and a seasoning blend that I will put in the description below. Then we're going to ladle some of that mixture into our pork and taste it as you go. Again, this can be spicy, this can be very flavorful, so make sure you taste it as you go and adjust it to your desired flavor. I'm going to add a little bit more paprika and cumin here because it needed it. And that is my carnitas. Alright guys, so those are five very easy to make items this Cinco de Mayo or for your next Taco Tuesday. You can see the very few ingredients that it required me to make all that stuff. Mexican food rules for that reason. So. Build yourself some tacos, put this out in front of your guests, and just let them go at it. I promise you they'll be happy with it. As always, thanks for watching.